Hi there, and welcome to the Grief and Rebirth podcast. I'm your host, author and trauma survivor, Irene Weinberg, here to encourage you wherever you are in your healing journey. In each episode, I chat with incredible grief and trauma specialists, healers, mediums, and celebs, as well as remarkable people who have inspiring healing stories to share. If you're looking for a podcast that's both uplifting and inspiring, you've found it. Let us help you find your joy in life. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds each of you so very well. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey, and I'm absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to interview Lisa Barnett, who will be speaking to us from San Rafael, California. Lisa was born consciously aware. She began studying spirituality when she was 14 years old and continued with philosophy in college. After college, she had the supposedly perfect life with a great corporate job and a happy marriage. But on the inside, she felt lost, chronically ill and unable to function efficiently at her high pressure job. Lisa turned to many healing modalities in the intuitive psychic arena, and she was guided to dig deep inside of herself to find her answers. One of those answers came in the form of the unconditional love, guidance, wisdom, and expanse of information transmitted to her from the Akashic record keepers, those beings of light who convey guidance about a person's life's path via the library of the soul's journey, known as the Akashic records. Lisa is now an internationally recognized author, teacher, and healer who has devoted her life as a divine channel of the Akasha, helping people connect with their soul guidance. She has authored three books, The Infinite Wisdom of the Akashic Records, From Question to Knowing, 73 Prayers to Transform Your Life, and her most recent book titled Your Soul Has a Plan, Awaken to Your Life Purpose, through your Akashic Records. Lisa is also the founder and teacher of the Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom, an internationally recognized school where she has taught thousands of students worldwide and has helped to train and certify dozens of Akashic consultants and teachers. I'm looking forward to talking with Lisa about the Akashic Records Who are the Akashic Record Keepers? How she helps individuals to align with their soul path? The ways our soul's plan is connected to our soul contracts? How the Akashic Records help to transform karmic patterns and vows? And much more for what is surely going to be an incredibly insightful, enlightening, and transformative interview. And full disclosure, everyone, I personally have healed physical and emotional issues address karmic carryover from past lives, and I recently received enlightening clarity about the mission of this podcast by working with the Akashic Record Keepers. Hey, Lisa, a warm welcome to Grief and Rebirth Podcast. What a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Irene. I feel so honored to be here with you and just Thank you for all those beautiful words. I appreciate you. Oh, my goodness. It's talking about a person with a sole purpose and a plan and how you're helping everyone. Wow, 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 wow. So, wow. So let's begin with this question so people can get to know Lisa from the ground up. What was it like for you to be a little girl born consciously aware who knew at the age of three that there was another place called home? And how has that memory informed your life? I mean, most people get amnesia. (laughs) So you have grandchildren, right? Imagine that little three-year-old with her hands on her hips going, I want to go back. (laughs) (laughs) I used to tell my mother, I want to go back. I want to go home. And my poor mom would be like, but honey, you are home. (laughs) Like, no, I'm not. (laughs) So I was a bit of a rebel, let's just say. Um, But, you know, it gave me a knowing. It gave me kind of a wisdom from that memory. So I remember when I had that kind of experience, even like at three and looking at my hands and thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm trapped back in a body. And it was. 
a little scary and a little startling, right? And I really felt trapped. So there was a whole trapped aspect, which uh, has been a bit of a process I've had to heal myself through, you know, around that kind of feeling like, I don't want to be here. I'm trapped in this body. Why am I back here? And so really it, it did get me to start studying very, very young, which is why I literally started to kind of read all the spiritual books I could get my hands on when I was like a freshman in high school, around 14 years old. Yeah. So it, it was a driving force. It's always been a driving force, which has, of course, been a great gift. But the other thing that is interesting is as a soul, you chose to come into this body. Then you got to your body and said, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> right. I want to go home. <laughs> We are just a whole dichotomy all the way around. (laughs) (laughs) Let's start because a lot of people listening to this podcast don't know what an Akashic Record is, who the Akashic Record Keepers are. So let's talk about who are they, who are the Akashic Record Keepers, and they're also known as the beings of light or the Akashic Masters. Have any of them had human lives? And could you tell everyone about this library of each of our soul's journeys known as the Akashic Records. Absolutely. Let me start with the Akashic Records are the recording of your soul's journey through all lifetimes, all places, planes, and dimensions. So not only our hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, let me say, lifetimes on planet Earth, But our thousands, millions or billions, because, of course, we don't have time and space. It's different in the quantum field of lifetimes in other worlds. And so it's interesting. Part of what the record keepers said to me many years ago is they said, well, we'll tell you what we're not. And then we'll go from there. Because, of course, over the years, my clients have said, oh, is that my is it my grandmother? Are the record keepers like, you know, my family members who have crossed over? Are they part of my Akashic record team? Is my ascended master? Maybe I I speak to archangels Are the archangels part of the Akashic records. And the record keeper said, we are none of the above. We are not ascended masters. We are not archangels. We are not ever have been human. We've never been human is what they want us to know. So we're no one who has actually crossed. Um, Even ascended masters, they say, you know, they went through that whole human um, path of from nothing to from, from asleep to awake, right? So what they explained to me was that they are pure source energy. They are souls that individuate from source, and then they chose to spend time in this information arm of source, this divine energetic aspect of source that records everything that ever happens. And so they're very, very pure. They have no judgment because they've never been human, right? We get a lot of judgment down here. And so they really hold us in the pure love, unconditional love of source. They are here to guide us and help us and support us. And we all have a team. It's not just one. So there's beings of light. There's Akashic teachers, Akashic masters, Akashic lords. And that sounds like four people, but there's many of them. They often say there's at least a dozen of us who are kind of actively working with you at any time in your life. And then there are more. <laughs> well, I mean, I actually had an experience when I was getting a reading once and and I, I was dealing with a physical problem that I had. And I assumed that it was the cause of it was something. And the answer was no, dear child. In 812 AD, you had this experience and the energetic imprint followed you. And they were very objective with absolutely no judgment, just reporting on what the situation was. It was so helpful to me. So the, these Akashic records, people kind of describe it as a library in the sky or in the cloud. Is that, would you agree yeah. with that, Lisa? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think that the easiest way to imagine it is that each and every one of you has your own personal library. Now, my library is very beautiful. It's all stone. It's got marble steps. <laughs> it's very Gothic looking. And I walk in and there's a you know, thousands and thousands of books in a big fireplace and a comfy chair and a gorgeous garden in the back. That's the way I imagine it, really. Of course, it's part, of, again, of the quantum field, 
of source. And so it's not physical, but we get to imagine it however we would like. And and it is um, it holds the etheric energy of everything you have ever been or done in every lifetime anywhere. Wow. So it's a massive library. If you think about it, you know, I see shelves upon shelves upon shelves of books. And so it's going all the way back to when you were a caveman or something. It's got longer. Longer. (laughs) Wow. So right. Even further, having a whole team to answer those questions for you, right? Could you imagine if you had to go into the library and even with computers today, you'd still be running around looking for the books because as a rule, when I do a reading for someone, they may ask me a question. So they say, actually, I just was working with a client earlier and she said, you know, I feel like I have blocks to abundance. And can you tell me where that comes from? And the record keeper said, well, it, Part of that comes from her ancestral lineage. Part of it is from her childhood. And another big piece of it comes from a variety of past lives where she took vows of poverty, where she was a nun or a monk, and other past lives in which she she died because she was very wealthy. We sometimes take vows. We make a vow. We say, I never want to be rich again because that got me killed. Or I never will take money for my you know, God-given gifts when we're a nun or a priest or a monk. Layers upon layers, that one question opened, you know, ancestral doors, childhood doors, past life doors, other past life doors. And so we're very complex souls. And now you help her, you helped her heal those things, right? So when yes. the, master, the masters helped her heal that so that those energetic imprints are not with her anymore so that now she can start to see abundance or have abundance in this lifetime, right? Correct. Correct. Absolutely. So to me, the great gift and blessing of working in the records is that because we are in this quantum field of all where there is no time or space, we literally can go kind of pluck that past life out, give it a healing, put it back in changed. And now that change ripples all the way through to this body this time, place, here, and now. <laughs> so you're, you're an editor. You're editing some of those past yeah. life experiences to craft a better outcome for a person. And, yeah. and if you're recording every single thing that happens, like in this lifetime, everything that we're thinking, everything that we're feeling is being recorded. Is that what we see when we have a life review and we cross over, when we when we are expo- you know looking at our life that we just left? Absolutely. You know, the record keepers are saying it's a little more general <laughs> right? They don't make you go through every minute. That would take some time, even if it was in that non-time space continuum. But really very much about what did I plan to do? And what did I actually do? And what lessons did I learn and grow from, right? And take that wisdom and share with the world. And what parts did I miss? What parts were I um, unable to you know, to learn from. It's fascinating because again, sometimes I'll have clients who who come to me and they have great hurt and pain. Sometimes it's from a childhood abusive parent or relationship or, or marriage that was very traumatic. And I say, you know, the record keeper suggests you do the forgiveness prayer for the next 30 days and let's do some, some healing work around forgiveness. And they're like, nope, I'm not ready to forgive them. And all you can say is, okay, that's part of the process. Come back when you're ready. Next time around. (laughs) Or next time around. Exactly. (laughs) It's going to follow you. Let me ask you this. You lost two best friends when you were a teenager. What did the Akashic Record Keepers reveal about the rabbit hole of pain and denial you suffered due to those two pivotal losses? And how did that experience ignite part of the soul's path of yours to become a healer? How, I mean, that was quite a few years ago. You've been doing this for quite a while now, right? Yes. Even though yeah, you're all that years. wasn't really, <laughs> <laughs> you know, 50 years ago, I almost, when I lost my first best friend. And actually, when she became really ill, she actually had a brain tumor. And the other best friend, there was three of us that were best soul sisters, best, best, besties. And the one 
the one was in the hospital. I I had um, she had just sent me an, uh, a letter right <laughs> by mail and had said, oh, I'm in the hospital and I'm in the children's wing. She was back in Chicago and she said, I'm looking out over the lake and the little kids are so cute. And she was kind of like enjoying her moment there with the children. And a day later, I get a call from my other friend who was also back in Chicago. We had recently moved to California and my friend Shubi said, um, Marsha's in a coma. She had a brain tumor and they did surgery on her and she hasn't woken up yet. And what it actually did was it triggered in me the past life memories of having been a healer. And I thought, oh my God, I'm supposed to heal her. How do I heal her? I don't know how to heal her. I know, know nothing. I'm 13 years old, right? Wow. But it was kind of that memory. And so it Were actually is. Help her? Or did she, or, or have you communicated, I'm sure you've communicated with her since. Is she still here or? Yes. So she, yeah. So, so the next day she actually, she actually crossed over, but it, it was a trigger for me to remember who I was and to literally start studying. And so it was after that, that I said, I've had these memories, these, this, you know, clearer awakening again. And, and I need to read stuff. I need to start to study what, what does that mean to be a healer? How would I be a healer? And the interesting thing is I, I, my parents were very agnostic. So I I thought, I don't even know how to pray. I don't even go to church. Right. And so that was kind of interesting. And really what these things do kind of with you in the same way, they trigger us to do something different. They wake us up and we go, oh my gosh, I now know something I didn't know. So her crossing really woke me back up to a greater truth of who I was and why I was here. So that was quite a personal purpose. Yes. Probably connected with you to do that for you as happened with me with Saul. Yes. And, you know, of course, there's and the other side of the conversation with the record keepers is that for me, it's not. Yes, there was part of a soul contract about awakening and and triggering me. But of course, I also know that she had her own personal reasons for coming in and coming into the family and leaving when she did. And, And I don't actually know what they are because I can't go into her Akashic records without her permission. But the record keepers have said, you know, it's not all about you either. (laughs) So yes, she came in to awaken you, remind you, trigger you to start to study again, now that you're old enough to start studying and reading. You know, it's painful. I I was traumatized when when she crossed thinking, thinking I should have been able to do something. But the record keepers, of course, of this pure love are like, you know, it's not your fault. It's not your responsibility. She had something for her, you know, that she as a soul wanted to do. And sometimes we actually choose a short life for our own variety of reasons. And that's a really important thing you just said that many people do not understand. Sometimes a a shorter life is planned for the lessons that will be learned around it. I mean, that's what I mean. Saul died in his 50s and the the message I got was Saul has to go. Many lessons will be learned from his death. So sometimes there are reasons that happens. And you've been talking about how the Akashic masters came into your life. And they, this profound information they conveyed with you. And how have they assisted you with the healing work you're doing? They actually work with you as you go to heal someone. They're right there. And it, and the teams change depending on who the person is, who you're working with. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, it's been a very long process. I've, I've you know, been on my, on this path. And again, you know, I always love to say it, it's not always very direct. I start knowing I had come to be a healer. I studied healing, really energy healing for six years in the beginning. That was the first place I went. And right back in the 80s, early 90s, nobody talked about the Akashic Records. It was not a common thing at all. So I was studying healing and doing um, energy healing, intuitive readings and things like that. And then all of a sudden I started to get this kind of big, expansive information and think, Wow, that's wow, right? But I wonder who that is. I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that the record keepers would talk to you, right? It wasn't a thing back then. So it took some time for me to realize that this is actually who was talking to me because I was taught to go up to the gates of the Akash 
go up and ask for energetic healing for my client after I'd already done healing and cleared out a lot of energies. Then I would go say, you know, please, I didn't even have names like record keepers for them, you know, kind of please, sirs, would you fill my client up with their highest Akashic information? And I could see it kind of come in, right? Like, like a waterfall or sometimes they were like symbols and, and I'd be like, oh, wow, that is so cool, right? (laughs) Wow. That's so amazing. Do have they told you why you were born consciously aware when other people are not? Because most of us are given answers. <laughs> yeah. It's a little appalling of an answer, but they said, you know, you've been on this earth for over a thousand lifetimes. And that's why you came in pretty conscious, because after you showed up a thousand times, <laughs> you get, and I thought, oh, seriously, a thousand? No wonder I kind of woke up at three and thought, what wow. again? Are you joking me? You know? Wow, that's amazing. Well, that kind of reminds me of I had an experience where my three, when he was three, one of my grandsons got out of the bathtub and announced that he was remembering a life where he was a caveman with his brother. Right? Just like, so he was having, he must have been alive a long time to remember that also, right? And children do somehow yes. remember, right? Yeah. I remember so a way. I- I remember, sorry, I remember like one of my earliest lifetimes, I think I was a whale. I'd come from the Dog Star series as a whale, loved, loved, loved this planet, the deep waters. And I actually made a soul contract with our dear mother earth of Gaia herself. And I said, I will be a an earth guardian for all of, because as a whale from Sirius, I knew that we were infinite, right? I will be an earth guardian. I will guard the earth. I will be here in support to, to you. Our earth is a sentient being. So I'm contracting with the earth herself, say, I will be here helping to support you and, and humanity. And and again, that's why they were like, that's why you keep coming back. And so I'm like, back. and that's another conversation for another time, serious and Gaia and <laughs> right. all of that, right? I want to ask you, um, for everyone listening, each of us has an intricately planned soul path. So how is each path created? So everyone listening to this has had a soul path for them created that they're not really aware of. They're, they're in their earthbound life, right. but there is an over view and how do you empower individuals to find all of this greater fulfillment abundance happiness health and ease by helping them to align with their soul path and the big one quite one is and do we also have soul paths regarding the relationships we have in our lives <laughs> yeah, that's huge i mean some people yes. are like this turkey i it's driving me crazy i planned this for Absolutely. Absolutely. So we really do. So if you imagine the record keepers are, of course, pure beings of light. And so they're very funny on top of, you know, love and just compassion and service. They can be pretty funny. So they give me these kind of silly stories and they say, so imagine that you have decided as this infinite soul to come back to earth and you call a meeting with all of your soul family members and other people you've had lives with that maybe you have a little bit of completion. Maybe you've got an old karmic pattern you want to work on. And so imagine you're like in a high school gymnasium, you know, with those little squeaky floors <laughs> and there you're all packed in this big gym and you're like, Hey, I'm going back to earth. Who wants to get married? You know, and someone says, me, 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 me. So different souls will pop up and they'll be like, oh, remember we had that great lifetime. We just were so happy, but it got cut short. Let's go back and and have another loving marriage. And someone else says, oh, hey, but remember, we were married once and you were an alcoholic and you left me and we never finished that. There's some old karma. There's an old pattern. Karma is never about punishment. It's about soul growth, right? So I say, okay, I'll write a contract with you and you and you and you and you, because of course we all come to earth and then we're, we move around a lot on this planet. Now you might meet that person that you had the karmic pattern with, but maybe they're already married. And so you go on and we set up really at least a good dozen soul contracts for significant partnerships, because we know that the best we can do, they, they don't always line up, right? Have you heard those stories about people who were together in high school and then they re-meet 20 years later and, you know, now they're both divorced after being married once and now they get married. That's actually like 
the story of my me and my husband who have been married for 33 years. We met in high school and we both got married and divorced. And you know, so we're complicated. We're not boring, which I always think is so interesting. Um, but we write all these soul contracts for people to have parents and children and best friends and and soul partners and business partners and all those gifts and talents you want to share with the world, right? So we say, boy, I've been around for a thousand years. I have some gifts. I have some talents I'd like to share with the world, right? And so we we plan those in as part of that contract, as part of those bigger purposes. So what about the people who do us dirty, who do us bad, who, who or do they sign up to be our nemesis to learn lessons from them? Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, imagine here we are in that high school gym with all of those <laughs> hundreds or thousands of people trying to figure out who wants to go back and who wants to be what. And maybe I say, you know, I had a past life where um, I was not very nice, right? Let's go with my old alcoholic past life. Maybe I left my family. I ran off. I left my poor husband with the kids all by themselves. And, and you know, maybe I ran away and then, you know, died and disappeared. And so I say, you know, I would like to have that kind of experience. I want to learn the whole aspect of that story. And so I say, who wants to, you know, kind of be the abusive alcoholic husband for me this time? Wow. And someone says, you know, I'll do that. I, I haven't done that side of the story. I'll, I'll do that for you. And they do. You know, and there we are in that marriage thinking, how in heaven's name did I ever marry this person who be, who's become an alcoholic, who is verbally abusive, who is breaking my heart? And, you know, we often feel like a victim. And then the record keepers say, you know, it's all about the soul growth. We're never right. a victim. We made the plan. Right. And they can go to and someone going through that can see you find out about that path and maybe um, heal that part of yourself and heal from the abuse or whatever, or, or make the choice that you're going to get a divorce or whatever you're going to do. Uh, and you're going to learn lessons from that experience, right? Absolutely. So that, that's yes. why we all come here. This is school. This, this I know. Is, this it school. really is, you know, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to really think of it as earth school. It's really, really true. And, and I would say that pro probably half of my clients come to me as, as women or men who have been in a relationship, often a, a fine relationship for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. They're like, you know, we're just going down different paths. Do I still have a soul contract? Is it kind of okay to get divorced? I don't want to create karma. And we can literally go into the Akashic Records and ask their, their record keepers, what did they write? Do they still have a soul contract? Is it still valuable and viable? Is there something to do to heal it? Or is it time? Sometimes contracts are complete and it's good to know that. So definitely I, I have tons of clients who are kind of in that place. And sometimes even though it's been a good life and maybe they had the family, that's what the contract was about. Having the family, raising those beautiful children, and then sometimes going off on your own path. Because you have more growth that's planned yep. for you in, in other ways. And please also explain to everyone, I know the answer to this, but they, many people listening to us are not aware that we have a soul and a larger oversoul. And then we've been talking about soul contracts and the way our soul's plan is connected to our soul's contract. But can you describe for everyone, where is our soul inside of us and where's our oversoul? What, what is all that about? And then all of this goes to the other side. We lose yeah. our earth bodies. And when, yeah. we, and then when, when this lifetime is over, we cross over to the other side meet right. up with our oversoul, right? Right. Absolutely. And so I, I think it's sometimes I think it's so complicated. I'm not really sure I can even wrap my brain around it because I think we're even bigger than we think we are. But so the, the cute analogy that the record keepers give me is like, just imagine your hand, right? And the oversoul is the palm and all of these fingers are aspects of you that are embodied, right? So there's a me here in California. There was a me from a hundred years ago, a me from 200 years ago, a me from 500 years ago, me from 5,000 years ago. 
And they're all connected to me, the big soul. And so we have our lives, we experience our experiences, um, we learn, we grow, and all of that information becomes part of the information of the main oversoul of that that big, huge aspect, like that soul would not fit in your body. Right. And, and so that, and, that, um, and that information with the oversoul also informs source because our experience informs source also, correct? It correct. does inform, yeah. And so here's the other a little bit complicated part is that because there is no time and space really in the quantum field, that we are always living those lives in some way in the quantum field, which means that when we go into the Akashic Records, and now I have certainly been blessed with being taught by the Akashic Record Keepers. Remember, I I had probably 10 years as a healer before I even accessed the records, but they would say, we want you to use your healing gifts through the Akash through the quantum field so that you can go outside of time and space, heal people in past lives, and then bring that that healed energy into this life, into this body now. And of course, because it's all connected. So if I heal this trauma from when I got killed as a witch, that I'm still afraid to talk about my spiritual life because I'm afraid I'm going to get killed again. If I go back and heal that lifetime where I'm still in the quantum field, being that person who gets killed, when I heal it, that life actually shifts in the quantum field and I don't get killed. I don't have the fear. I don't have all of those beliefs and those vows. That energy becomes part of, again, my oversoul and eventually like source, right? Going back into the whole body, (laughs) into the whole oneness unified field. And and so that healing ripples out throughout time space continuum in really into into source. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I've experienced it myself. So I mean I've dealt with past lives and different things that are so interesting. So it's fascinating. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to ask you is that you state, I love this, I love this, Lisa. You state that most of us who are interested in spirituality and most significantly in the Akashic records have lived at least 400 lives on earth. So I know that I've lived at least 400 lives on earth. What are the primary reasons? I I mean, does a soul mostly come to earth to learn? And how do you know all this to be true that someone interested in this has had at least 400 lifetimes? That's fascinating. So other people will see to this say, well, I'm just learning about this. Does this mean I'm a young soul? As opposed to an older soul? Well, and the interesting thing about young and old is even, again, because because we don't just live on Earth. So you could be a newer soul on the planet, but you might be a very old soul in general living in other places, planes, and dimensions, right? So maybe you were out there working in the angelic realm, helping people, seeing Earth, learning from kind of a different place and perspective from that angelic realm. And then you finally said, all right, I'm jumping into a body. I've learned enough. I get, you know, I get the story. Now I'll be human. And so maybe we've only had a hundred or 200 human lives, but we're very wise because we've been studying this forever. And it's really the same thing that they told me when I said, we want you to help us anchor the Akashic Records back to humanity, back to the earth for humanity. And I said, you know, I have three toddlers. Why would you ask me? I'm some mom in the suburbs. And they said, oh, because you were one of us. You were a record keeper. And so I was like, really? Is that possible? <laughs> you know, but, but what we start to realize is when we work deep in the records, it's a whole energy. It's a whole feeling, you know, that energy of truth. And I would say for most of my my clients, I bring them into the Akash with me when I do a reading and do a healing and they feel it in their body. They resonate with the information. And if I say, which I would really say to you, Irene, is I'm hearing that you've been here closer to 600 plus lifetimes. And that's why you are as aware and as awake as you are at, with the mission that you have. I've lived a thousand. Many of us, they say it takes 
almost 600 to 800 to kind of complete the soul growth, that learning aspect, that karmic aspect, those patterns that we get stuck in very often, um, takes us almost, you know, five, 600, 800 lives to kind of grok all of that, work through that, and, and then just kind of come in a more pure way, although no matter what, we always are learning and growing as a soul. Well, I, I mean, I can actually think about there's been, I mean, certain experiences that I've had in this lifetime that is now informing me because I had I had to heal from them. And that is feeding what I'm doing on the podcast. So like I can see how I set certain things. It wasn't fun when I was going through it. But I can see how I set certain things up and you make choices as to how you're going to respond to it. Yeah. Right. When my second, my second soul sister, who who I had actually been best friends with since I was like four, <laughs> we met in a little swimming class. And then the, her parents moved across the street from my parents. Our parents became best friends. She and I were best friends. Our brothers were best friends. For, well, that was about 14 years we were embodied as as soul sisters, as best, best friends, but probably thousands of lifetimes and soul family members, which is a whole nother thing. But when she passed, I, it really, I thought derailed me. I decided as awake as I was, right? I started studying when I was 14. I'm studying philosophy at university. And now I'm 19 years old when Shubi dies in a, a car accident. And I thought, you know what? Two best friends, two children, right? Two teenagers dead. I am not happy with source, with the divine. I am not happy with this life or this world. I'm just going to go pretend I'm human. I'm going to try and be normal, no matter what I know. I'm <laughs> I'm going to take whatever that is. I'm going to stick it in an etheric shoebox. I'm going to shove it up on a shelf. I don't want to do this. And so it really, you know, it was so heartbreaking. And I did that. I I had a good career. I worked in advertising. I really had a whole kind of 10 year life where like a traditional life, like you're typical. I was working in corporate on advertising, doing that, you know, traveling, all that kind of stuff, making money, getting married, getting divorced. I was being pretty successful at forgetting, which was the interesting thing. And then it wasn't until I really got really sick with chronic fatigue. And I think it's helpful for people to realize that often it is illnesses and accidents, which are our triggers, right? That wake us back up again. So Marsha's death was a trigger for me. Shuby's death was a trigger for me. Kind of in an interesting way, when I look at it, Marsha kind of woke me up at 13 and then she be almost put me back to sleep at 19. So kind of interesting. But again, we have to know that, you know, divine timing and, and this bigger purpose. And so, of course, many, many years later, now that I'm chatting it up with the Akashic Record Keepers every day, I said, you know, did I totally goof up? I mean, I was so awake at 19. I could have gone on and just about been a spiritual teacher at 20. I said, did I really mess up? Now I'm, you know, in my 30s. I wasted all those years, right? And they laugh at me, of course, because they're just pure light and joy and love. And they laugh at me and they said, you would not be who you are today if you didn't have all of those experiences you wouldn't have the compassion the really the love and the understanding because you I did everything I was out there in California having a very good time in the 80s you were experiencing people you're experiencing you're experiencing people's experiences their life path all of that and then right? once you got and then once you got uh back on the on the road you were you had a deeper understanding of where people are coming from to be able to help them. Right. I could never really judge people because I always say I was kind of out there. I did everything I could. Who would I be to judge anyone, anything, honestly? And for me, that was just a huge blessing to be able to to see the world from having been in it. To be yeah. able to understand the, the challenges and the traumas and the pain that people go through. You and, know, to, and that is so true because I, I I don't really judge people either because I, who am I to judge? I know that they've had their own path and their own ways that they're learning, right? right. So, and the Akashic Records help you to realize that. So I want everybody to learn about your wonderful book. 
It's called Your Soul Has a Plan. Awaken to your life purpose. Beautiful. <laughs> Awaken to your life pur purpose through your Akashic records. <laughs> it guides its readers to embrace the path their soul has laid out for them. So would you like to tell us the core? Well, we've sort of talked about the core truth of who each of us is and how the messages of our soul help us to feel clear, move forward, and be excited about our lives. I mean, we through the records, we actually are connecting with our souls. And what else would you like us to know or for our audience to know about your wonderful book? Because you're going to go right out and get it. Yes, absolutely. So I really, you know, I loved it because, of course, I channel these books, right? So when it came up and they gave me the table of contents, it goes something like this. Uh, chapter two says, why am I here? Equals you have a soul plan. <laughs> chapter three, relationships equals soul contracts. Completed karma, right? Why do I have these challenges? What about karma? It's about your soul's growth, right? Gifts and talents. I brought a lot of gifts and talents. What, that, what does that mean? You know, it's these are your purposes, not just one purpose. And all your past lives equal so much wisdom for you, right? And interestingly, you know, the trauma we experience also gives us so, so much impetus to create freedom for ourselves, to move through the trauma, to clear the blocks, to understand, you know, the reasons and to move into a place of freedom. All of this information, all of these gifts, you know, equal abundance as we're our soul's plan. Really, the record keepers often say, your soul plan is your purpose. Your purpose is not just a little job description. It's not a business you're going to start or a job you're going to have. Your purpose is to complete your soul's plan as best you can. And that means understanding all these contracts you wrote, understanding, seeing, and activating these gifts and talents you have, really going forward with so much of the, the wisdom that you have and the support, the service that you've come to bring to humanity. When I wrote the book, it really came through also to put in an exercise for reflection. And so there are questions for people to reflect on each chapter, like, how, how does that relate to me and my life? You know, how can I see that and understand that. So it's helpful for me to understand. And then we added usually about three of the Akashic healing prayers that I've channeled. I actually channeled a book of 73 healing prayers, wow. but in each of these chapters, I've added two or three of these healing prayers to help support people. So it's not just a lot of information. There are reflections. There is it, it helps you take it into your life. There's healing prayers that you can use for yourself every day, all week, or, or however you're called to use them. So they made it a very interactive book, which um, I feel is very, very helpful. And I get to say that kind of because I'm just I'm just the vehicle, right? I just right. get to download and channel it and, and put it into. Right. Well, you, you see know. yourself as the vehicle and I see myself as the bridge. And we're both just doing our, our purpose. We're both living that. And what surprised, has surprised me very much is that even a business has a soul, even a, a career has a soul. Is that a contract also? And is that part of a person's soul purpose? I know that this podcast has a soul and there's, there's a lot to this. But for people who are working, I don't know, she's a paralegal in a law firm or whatever, or someone just started a new business. Do those paths actually uh, have souls? How uh, are planned? Yes, yes. So, so the interesting thing is, is that when we have, say, honed certain gifts and talents to a point where we are really very called to create our own business, that business has a soul. Like your podcast, like Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom, it has its own kind of path and purpose. And so it's very useful to open my own records. And then I open the records of my business. I open the records of Akashic Knowing and ask, is it in my highest and best interest to, to write this book, to work with this person, to, you know, to take this trip, to share these gifts, you know, on this podcast or that telesummit. And so we really do end the how often, you know, so there's so much information in there, but if it's, if you are working more in a job and it's not your business, that business will have a soul and 
and a plan, but it would belong to the owner of the business. So when we create our own business, it can be very, very profound as you're starting to write your write your business plan, right? You write that business plan and then you're like, get an Akashic Record reading and find out more about the plan that your business has for this. I would imagine it also is very helpful if someone gets into a business and they go, I am not resonating. I don't feel right here. And they can check with the records to see, is this where I'm supposed to be? Or is this intuition that I'm getting that this is not right for me? Is there a different path? So perfect. Absolutely. So sometimes we get in our own way, right? We've got these big brains and we think, this is what I'm going to do. I can make a lot of money at this and then it doesn't work out. And so you can go in and say, you know, how can I realign my business to be aligned to the sole plan of my business? How can I, maybe it's me personally too, and the business. And so, so there might be a small shift or a really large shift. Maybe we misheard or it was our ego or our, our money desires or whatever it is. So we're a little bit askew. And so I have seen that really help many, many, many businesses over the years to, to go into that. And what is that purpose? And, and it might be about writing the book first before you're creating the program, or, you know, maybe it's about working with someone else that you have a sole contract with, to partner with, to, to um, be a team for that business. You know, it's phenomenal, especially as we're kind of starting out with our own our own business or career. It's really a wonderful resource. It's just such a, it's sort of like having a cheat sheet to your life. Right. It really gives you a step (laughs) to understand, to understand what is is meant for you. And you usually resonate with it. So I got to, I got to ask you, Lisa, for all those people who are looking for someone for love in their lives, can the Akashic Records also help them find true love? Um, Absolutely. So again, in a way, these things can be, we write a lot of soul plans. Most of us, as I was saying earlier, write at least a a dozen, half a dozen to a dozen soul contracts for significant partners. And so what I will often do with a client is ask if there are still soul contracts that are available available and viable, right? Because some of my clients are in their 60s or 70s and they were like, is it possible there's still someone out there for me? And so we can do that. We can activate, kind of realign and reactivate that contract and do healing work and clearing work on any trauma that may have shut your heart down, maybe is stopping you in some way from being the magnet to that beautiful love that's out there waiting for you, right? Because often we get a broken heart and that will kind of block that magnetic energy from your heart. And so we can do heart healing around your heart, around that terrible divorce, around any of that um, emotional pain and trauma or abuse that people have experienced that often makes them feel, you know, less than or unworthy of a loving, supportive relationship. But we really write many, many, many support contracts with people to support each other. And that's really what you want to find in a significant partnership is a support contract. Like, I'm here to support you and you're here to support me. And we may not even be doing the same sort of work. We could be very different. But we have that support contract, and that's the root of that energy is very powerful. Wow, that's beautiful. And I guess this whole interview is about the importance of healing through the Akashic Records and why it's, what would you say, why is it important for each of us coming into this earth school with all the things that we go through? Why is it really important for us to heal as much as we can as we go from lifetime to lifetime. When we can start to heal, clear, release old energies, when we can move out of feeling like a victim, when we can move out of that low vibrational energies of shame and guilt and self-doubt and jealousy and competition, all the low vibes, as we can heal, clear, see the bigger picture, right? When you know, like you said, when you know, it's like you you can read your own cheat sheet. You can move forward really quickly and easily. You can you can heal the pain and the trauma, and then you can see and open the doors to the next higher um, aspect of your life. It's like to me it, when you can. Um, 
I sometimes look at it like there's that big block, there's that bolted door that's keeping you from moving forward and you clear the emotional pain and you let go of the old beliefs and you release any of the energies that are holding you down and you open that door. And not only is it one door you opened, there's a huge hall filled with hundreds of other doorways, opportunities, choices, and they just go up and up and up energetically. So you're creating, you're walking those stairs, you're creating a really beautiful life for yourself consciously when we can see and know we are infinite souls. We are not just silly little humans having one life. We know so much. We can really create a beautiful, empowered life for ourselves. It really is the definition of living a conscious life, what you're saying. So now they all want to buy your book. Your soul has a plan. Awaken to a life purpose through the Akashic Records. And you've got an Akashic Knowing School of Wisdom. You've got online Akashic workshops and trainings. You've got meditations. You've got personal healing sessions. Tell us all about whatever you'd like everyone to know about all of these things that they can be blessed with to 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 find on your and we will be giving all the links to everything when we release your episode so what would you like everyone to know lisa oh my gosh well you all have access into your own akashic records and for many people one of the easiest ways to access your soul's plan your akashic wisdom and get a very deep quantum healing, which is transformational, is to have a a consultation and healing session with me. So of course, you find that on my website under Akasha Consultations. So of course, as we're beginning, a lot of times it's easier to go to somebody and say, please help, you know, let me get the lay of the land. And then many of my um, clients go on to take my online workshops. And I teach people with the five-step wisdom prayer system that the record keepers gave me many, many years ago. They said, you know, most of us humans are kind of linear logical. So we don't want to tell you that you have to learn to meditate for 20 years before you can access your records. Here is an energetic key that will open the door to move you into your own personal Akash. And so I teach people how to do that with my five-step wisdom prayer system online. And so that information is, of course, on my website under Akasha classes. And there are also home study products. If you want to learn to read your records just by watching videos in your own time, that's on my website. There are guided meditations that are amazing tools to call back your energy, create a column of light, connect more infinitely with using um, the infinite connection meditation. So lots of um, opportunities to access your records in so many different ways so that you can really grow and access this phenomenal energy and move forward in your life. You're a once we are a one-stop source. <laughs> right? And what is the Lisa? How is, let me ask it this way. How is finding joy in life connected to accessing a person's own soul plan and guidance. So I would say that when we start to access our own soul plan and the guidance from the Akashic Records, it's like moving from kind of being down, standing here in this kind of lowly world, feeling maybe a bit alone, to having connection to the divine, to a whole huge team of Akashic record keepers who are in service to you, to that beautiful library about your soul, everything you've ever been or done, and realizing I am so much more. Wow, I was a healer in other lives. I've done this. I've traveled there. I've written books. I've done so many things. It just changes our view of who we are as an infinite wise soul. And it helps us to just shift into that beautiful energy of, I am here in service. I am light and I am love. And I am now able to be of service to myself, my family, my community, my business, right? To humanity. And so it really shifts our view of of who we are. And to me, that is just phenomenally profound. (laughs) <laughs> it is, and that brings you so much joy. Absolutely. You know, Lisa, I love this quote from your book, Your Soul Has a Plan. All we have to do is hold the energy of love in our hearts, and we can raise the vibration globally. 
easy, right? These simple acts will allow humanity to continue without a world war or a major catastrophe. Please do not underestimate the power of your light. And remember, no matter where you are in life, being of service to humanity means using compassion and love everywhere, at work, with your family and friends, or as you're raising your kids. When you smile at others, you are sharing light. That is so wonderful. And Lisa, I want to thank you for devoting your life as a divine channel of the Akasha, for helping people connect to their soul guidance, for sharing your enormous light with humanity. And I thank you from my heart for this incredibly insightful, enlightening, and transformative interview. Thank you so, so much. And here's a loving reminder, everyone, that you can see the show notes and all Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on IreneWeinberg.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on social at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. As I like to say, to be continued. Many blessings and bye for now. And thank you so, so much, Lisa. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you.